Happy Sabbath, family. Here are today's announcements and upcoming events. Join us for Mount Calvary Prayer Live, hosted by Dr. Moses Brown on April 17, 2024, at 7 p.m., with special guest Dr. Stephen Norman, former Communications Director of the Southern Union of Seventh-day Adventists, with the topic, How God Can Take Your Brokenness and Turn It Into a Blessing. Join us on Facebook or YouTube at Mount Calvary SDA Tampa. You don't want to miss this. 24-7 Prayer. Join us April 20th through the 27th. Everyone who believes in the power of prayer, needs prayer, wants to see loved ones come to Jesus, or wants to experience the baptism of the Holy Spirit, sign up today in the front foyer for one or more 30-minute sessions of prayer. Much prayer, much power. What if I told you the Bible is a fairy tale book and not real? How do you really know that the Bible is the Word of God? Why are there so many different versions of the Bible? Find out the answers to all these questions and more. Bring a friend. Hey ladies, it's time for a road trip to Copper Hill, Tennessee, May 26th through June 2nd. It's a free seven-day stay. However, there are only 17 spots available. Register today. See Dominique Ben or Sister Carol Johnson to register. Community Service Hours. Are you in need of community service hours? If so, Meet Ms. Sandra Hall in the Fellowship Hall following Divine Service today. Hurry, there's a limited number of volunteers needed. Don't miss out. Do you have the desire to see justice prevail? Then join the upcoming Hope Nehemiah Action this Tuesday, April 16th from 6 to 8 p.m. live and in person. Everyone is welcome at Bible Base Fellowship 4811 Ehrlich Road, Tampa. Come hear about issues surrounding mental health, affordable housing, and other issues. A block note message will be sent out as a reminder. Remember to save the date for the upcoming Nehemiah Action. On this Tuesday, we're looking for help with carpooling. Call Pastor Parham if available at 954-701-7659. April is here and I hope you are moving more. I certainly am. If you haven't planted anything, it's probably too late. I hope you weren't like me. I quickly realized that too much fertilizer is not a good thing. On April 14, get ready for a field trip. We will visit the home of Mr. Edson Jarvis to see his garden. This event starts at 11 a.m., so see the church bulletin for Mr. Jarvis' address. A flock note will be sent with the address and time before the event. By the 15th of the month, please send a picture of you moving more or of you gardening or both. We will have a wonderful display of our first harvest on April 27th in the lobby. I can't wait to see what you have grown. We will end the month with another opportunity for you to move more and to fellowship. Get ready for instructor-led chair exercises, horseshoes, volleyball, a boxing station, and shot glass smoothies. After or before you work out, enjoy a therapeutic chair massage from Michelle Clendenin. Michelle is a licensed massage therapist dedicated to holistic health and wellness since 2010. She has a background in massage therapy from the Florida College of Natural Health. 
She expanded her expertise with a bachelor in sports and exercise science from the University of Central Florida and has a master's in clinical nutrition from Sonorian University of Health Sciences. For just a dollar a minute, you can get a massage that will help you feel refreshed and support a minority-owned business. If you are interested in a massage on April 28th, sign up in the lobby to secure a spot. In April, let's get into nature. If you are graduating or have a graduate this year, Mount Calvary SDA Church would love to celebrate with you. This year, Graduation Sabbath will be taking place on May 25th. We would love to recognize your academic achievements, all graduates pre-K and higher. Please RSVP by May 10th with your information to communications at mountcalvarysdatampa.org. Information should include the graduate's name, the school, a picture of the graduate, and future plans. Please refer to the Flock Note Bulletin for all announcements, links, and times. If you'd like to connect with us, please contact us at www.mountcalvarysda.org or visit us on Facebook and continue to watch us on YouTube at Mount Calvary SDA Tampa. And be sure to subscribe to our page. Have a happy Sabbath.
Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to Mount Calvary this morning. It's so good to see you all. This is the day that the Lord hath made, so we will rejoice and be glad in it. So as we greet one another this morning, tell someone how good God has been to you today. You can stand. We can have a little music. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Come on, so good to see all of you. We welcome each one of you. We welcome you as you listen to your and watch on your various devices. We welcome you to Mount Calvary this morning. And if we have any first time visitors with us, would you please stand and be recognized? By, amen. Praise the Lord. Now, next time you come, this is your home. So feel right at home. Amen. Let us all stand as we affirm our faith this morning. It's found in Exodus, the 20th chapter, verses 11. All together, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy ser manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you. 
that is comfortable to you. You could stand, you could kneel, and just prepare for prayer. I would bless the Lord, O my soul, Lord Father. His praise should be continually in my lips. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He is good, Lord Father. Father, we come to you this morning acknowledging the presence of the Holy Spirit with us this morning. We welcome the Holy Spirit which leads and guides us in all truth, dear Lord Father. And this morning, we come to the Holy Spirit, we come to God asking for forgiveness of our sins and cleansing from all unrighteousness, Father. Father, we are not worthy, but you are worthy. You are worthy, God. And we want to align ourselves with a righteous and worthy God. Father, we come to you bringing our burdens to you because, Father, we come to the burden bearer you alone could bear our burdens. So, Father, this morning we want to bring those who are sick among us, dear Lord Father. The sick, they need your attention, Lord Father. They need you to give them that healing touch, that touch that would restore them to back to where they should be. Whether it's physical, mental, or emotional, dear Lord Father, even spiritual, dear Lord Father. So we want to lift our sick to you, dear Lord Father, and ask you, dear Lord, to become divinely close to them, dear Lord Father, so that they would feel your presence, dear Lord, giving them that, that assurance that you are working on their behalf, dear Lord. We just want to praise your holy name for a compassionate God. And Father, as we continue, dear Lord Father, we want to bring before you those that lost loved ones. We just want to ask you, dear Lord, to comfort them. Comfort them in a way that they know that you are with them and you have never left them nor forsaken them, dear Lord Father. Bring them to that, give them that peace that you alone could give, dear Lord. And Father, as we continue, we have we celebrate this day that you have blessed, this Sabbath day, dear Lord Father. And as we prepare to move forward to the next six days of our working week, we want to revive, ask you to give us that full armor that we would prepare, be prepared for the six days coming, dear Lord Father. We ask you, dear Lord, to be with our families in a special way, dear Lord Father. Strengthen them, dear Lord Father. Give them that assurance that if they abide in you, you would abide in them. So that they would be prepared for the coming six days and be ready for all eventualities. So we just want to thank you and continue to praise our God who is able. He is a promise keeper, a way maker. That is who our God is. And Father, this morning we want to pray this morning for our upcoming revival. We want to ask you to open those hearts and minds that would receive your word. And we want to acknowledge and bless the messenger, Dr. Brown, dear Lord Father. Help us to prepare our hearts to receive him next week when he starts the revival. 
and not forgetting this morning that we want to lift up our pastor who would be breaking the bread this morning dear lord pastor johnson dear lord father give him your 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 power and authority to proclaim his word this morning we just want to praise you and thank you for the god you are showing us compassion and love for each one of us i pray in jesus name amen and amen us that he loves us and he's always willing to bless us and in Malachi 3.10 he states that he's going to open the heavens of the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on us and by that I understand it to be that he wants to bless us abundantly more than usual He's seeking to, to, to give us that assurance. And help us, Lord, as you state to us that you want to bless us. Help us to realize that we should do something. We should have that desire to return a faithful tithe and offering so that we would get that blessing, that abundant blessing that extra blessing so I just want to ask the deacons and the deaconess to stand let us pray oh father and oh God we just want to thank you that you want to bless us give us that extra blessing and we want to ask you dear Lord father that as we prepare to receive your return your tithes and offering that we have that desire to to to, to give that offering dear lord father bless the offering that we are about to give and help us as we give we give with a willing heart we are faithful to your command we thank you and we just want to praise you in jesus name i pray amen
Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Oh, that didn't sound like Mount Calvary. Good morning and happy Sabbath. All right, now it sounds like I am at home. Some people call me a teacher. Some people call me an educator. Some people call me superintendent. And some people actually call me Farmer Brown. I accept all of those titles. Today, we're going to talk just a little bit about some of the benefits of gardening. I am actually an avid gardener. I love gardening. I enjoy my time in my garden. So we're going to talk about um, just a few of the benefits. I believe I have maybe five or six. So if I could get my first slide up, I would surely appreciate it. Most people, when they think of gardening, they think of physical exercise. First off, do we have any gardeners in the house today? OK, I see a few hands. Hopefully. At the end of this five-minute talk, I would see more hands going up after we talk about those benefits. Benefits of gardening, physical exercise. Gardening actually helps to give you a full body workout, whether you like it or not, whether you planned on doing it or not. You see, when we garden, gardening includes bending. You have to get down in the weeds and pull the weeds. You have to get down in the dirt and plant your seeds. You have to weed around your plants to keep them healthy. Stretching, you must stretch. It also includes walking and digging. You have to dig in the soil and, of course, lifting. And so doing all of those you will get a full body workout. No need to go to the gym and spend money. Garden, full body workout. Actually, Ellen White encourages that. Natural exercise. Number two, anyone stressed? Anyone anxious? Gardening helps to lower our stress and anxiety levels. For me personally, when I'm stressed, when I'm anxious, all I need to do, even when I'm working, I take five minutes, go out in my garden, and while I'm digging, while I'm pulling weeds, I am no longer thinking about what is stressing me. My stress just oozes away. Miraculously, gardening, relieving your stress, relieving your anxiety. And once your anxiety and your stress levels begin to go down, what naturally happens, your immune system gets a boost. Anyone wants a stronger immune system? Let's lower our stress levels. Let's lower our anxiety levels and our immune system, just like that guy in the, in, the, in the picture there, you will be grabbing a hold of your anxiety level, your stress level, and pulling that gauge back over to the green. Garden. And then, of course, fresh air. One of the natural remedies that Ellen White talks about, when you get out there in the garden, you're going to be exposed to fresh air. Actually, in the garden, you know, plants, God is just so amazing. Plants have this amazing ability to give us a vital component of life that we need. What am I talking about? Oxygen. As you surround yourself with plants, the plants are releasing oxygen that we need and at the same time absorbing something that we don't need, which is carbon dioxide. Get in the garden. Get in the garden, I say. Get in the garden. And then, of course, we are exposed to sunshine, one of the other natural remedies. What do we get from the sunshine? 
vitamin D. So let's get out and dig into the soil. And then, believe it or not, there are some spiritual benefits. Spiritual benefits. If you are a gardener, you have no choice but to be patient. Because plants like to take their time to grow. Most plants. We have to be patient. You know, we put a tomato seed in the ground today, and tomorrow we want to go and reap tomatoes, don't we? You've got to be patient. You've got to be patient. Diligence. If you want your plants to grow, if you want your garden to prosper, you have to be diligent. You have to get out there every day and do a little work. Diligence. Self-control. Self-control. If you're like me, um, I love mangoes. I'm just putting the word out right now. Okay? Love mangoes. And growing up, you know, we'd go to the mango trees, and they're not quite ripe. But what do we do? We're forcing them, we're forcing them, and if we're going to enjoy a truly ripe and delicious mango, we have to be what? We have to exercise patience. We have to exercise patience. And then we have what? What's the next one on the list? Self-control is our diligence. And then we have what? Self-control. And we have, you have to be attentive. You have to be attentive. In my in my garden, I don't use chemicals. I don't use pesticides. And when I plant certain things, tomatoes, greens, etc., there are some bugs that love to mess with them. And I have to be super attentive every day. I have to get out there and check every single plant to make sure that those rascals are not harvesting before I do. Attentiveness. Now, all of this, let's see, patience, diligence, self-control, attentiveness. Does this kind of sound like something familiar to you? The fruit of the Spirit? Indeed, indeed. And we'll get all of those benefits when we garden. And then, you guys are going to love this one. Amen? Mm-hmm. When we garden, we will save money. You know, um, one thing that I really enjoy is for, for my wife to be cooking. You know, she's cooking, um, and she says, EJ, that's what she calls me. My wife calls me that. Um, she says, EJ, um, I would like to cook cabbage today. Can you go get me one, please? That is wonderful. And I leave the kitchen, run to the garden, cut a head of cabbage, and I'm back inside. Isn't that awesome? Garden. Everyone can do it. You don't even have to have a big plot of land in the backyard. You can garden in pots. Anywhere, even if you live in an apartment. Gardening. Saving money. You don't have to go to the grocery store to get certain things. All right, um, next one. Almost finished. One of the cool things about gardening is that I don't have to worry about what I eat because there are no pesticides. See, I grew them myself. I grew the fruits, I grew the vegetables, and so I can actually go into my garden, pick a tomato, and just pop it into my mouth. I know there are no chemicals on it. And so I have confidence in what I am eating. When I go home today for lunch, I'm going to go to my refrigerator, pull out the meal that my wife prepared, and a part of that, string beans. I actually went into the garden earlier this week, picked a pot of string beans, a little bowl, took them inside, and in 30 minutes, my wife had fixed them up so wonderfully, fresh. Now, the thing about gardening, when you eat your fruits and vegetables from your own garden, it is nothing like what you buy at the farmer's market or the grocery store. It's a totally different flavor, a richness, a sweetness. I invite you 
to garden with me. Now, I understand that there's a field trip tomorrow. Someone told me that there's a field trip at some, oh, my house? It's at my, my garden. Okay. There's a field trip at my garden tomorrow. At what time? 11 o'clock sharp, not 11 a.m. And that's important because I garden at night. I'm, yeah, I do garden at night. Um, not 11.05, please, because I have other things to do. Um, so 11 o'clock, I'll see you at the garden. And my very last slide, my very last slide, let's dig in the dirt. Get our hands dirty. Amen. God bless you. Good morning, church. We have our children's choir, and um, we have so many children in the, in the audience that need to be up here with them. So at our next rehearsal, we'll, we would like to have more children singing, so we want to fill up this choir loft if we can. We have heavily children's voices singing, all right?
ask that you would speak to our hearts. Give us ears to hear and hearts to receive. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Let's let's give our children's choir and our youth praise team a hearty amen. Amen. Turn with me to 1 Kings chapter 21. 1 Kings chapter 21. First Kings chapter 21. The Bible says, and it came to pass after these things that Nabob the Jezreelite had a vineyard which was in Jezreel hard by the palace of Ahab king of Samaria and Ahab spake unto Nabob saying give me thy vineyard that I may have it for a garden of herbs because it is near unto my house and I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it. Or, if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. And Nabob said unto Ahab, The Lord forbid it me that I should give the inheritance of my father's house unto thee. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased because of the word which Nabob the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give thee for the inheritance of my fathers. And he laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face and would eat no more bread. Subject for today is payday someday. Payday someday. I introduce to you Nabob. Nabob was a devoted Israelite who lived in the town of Jezreel. He claimed to that which is good. He would not dilute the strict belief of his personal devotion to God for any profit of money. He would not change his heavenly principles for, those, for loose or unsuited transactions. And this good man who loved God, loved his family and his nation, had a vineyard which was close by the summer palace of Ahab the king, a palace unique in its splendor as the first palace inlaid with ivory. This little vineyard had come to Nabob as a cherished inheritance from his forefathers, and all of it was dear to his heart. I introduce to you Ahab, the vile human toad who was swallowed upon the throne of his nation. The worst of Israel's kings. King Ahab had command of a nation's wealth and a nation's army, but he had no command of his lusts and appetites. Ahab wore rich robes, but he had a sinning and wicked and terrible heart beneath them. Like many of us, we look good on the outside, but wicked on the inside. He ate the finest food the world could supply. And this food was served to him in dishes splendid, splendor by servants obedient to his every beck and nod. But he had a starved soul. He lived in palaces within and without, spacious and luxurious. 
Yet he tormented himself for one bit of land more. Ahab was a king with a throne and a crown and a scepter. Yet he lived nearly all of his life under the thumb of a wicked woman. He was a tool in her hands. Ahab pillared himself in the contempt of all of God's fearing men as a mean and selfish rascal who was the curse of his country. The Bible introduces him to us in 1 Kings 21, 25, and 26, 16, and 33. I introduce to you Jezebel, the wife of Ahab the king of Israel, a king's daughter and a king's wife, the evil genius of once of her dynasty and of her country, infinitely more daring and reckless was she in her wickedness than her husband. Masterful minded in evil and wickedness. She was a worshiper of Baal. She hated anyone and everyone who spoke against or refused to worship her pagan god. She was a blunt, blunt witch of wickedness, brazen, brazen, evil conniving. Nah. And most of that which is bad in all evil women found its expression through this painted viper of Israel. She had that rich endowment of nature which a good woman ought always to, 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 to dedicate to the service of her day and generation. But this idolatrous daughter of an idolatrous king of an idolatrous people engaging with her maidens in worship of a pagan god. The personification of this most of forbidding uncleanness and, and sexuality became the evil genius who wrought wreck, wreck, wreckages, wreck, wreck, through and brought blight and devised death. She was the beautiful and malicious Adla, coiled up on the throne of the nation beside the toad. I introduce to you Elijah, the Tishabite prophet of God, at a time when by tens of thousands the people had forsaken God's covenants, thrown down God's altar, slayed God's people with the sword. The prophet, knowing much of the glorious past of the now apostate nation, must have been filled with horror when he learned of the rape, heatedness, fierce cruelties, and wrecking, wrecking attitude of Ahab's idolatrous capital. Holy anger burned within him. He wore the roughest known of clothes, but he had underneath these clothes a righteous and courageous heart. He ate food from heaven, delivered by birds and a widow's fare, but he was a great, in great physical and spiritual athlete. He was God's tall cedar that wrestled with the paganistic, uh, chaotic times of his day. Without bending or breaking, he was God's granite wall that stood up and against the, the rising tides of the apostate of his day. Though much alone, he was sometimes attended by the invisible host of God. He grieved only when God's cause seems to be trampled over. He passed from earth without dying into a celestial glory. Everywhere in courage is, a, is admired and, 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 and manhood honored and service appreciated. He was honored as one of earth's greatest heroes and one of heaven's greatest saints. He was Sia who saw clearly. He was a great heart who felt deeply. He was a hero who dared valiantly. And now, with the introduction of these four characters, Nabal, the devout Jezerite, Ahab, the vile human toad, Jezebel, 
the beautiful Adler beside the toad, and Elijah, the prophet of the living God. I bring you the tragedy of payday someday. There was a real estate request. Give me that vineyard. Reasonable request. Ahab had no intention of cheating, nor, nor killing, nor killing a Nabob to get the land. Ahab offered to give him what the land was worth or give him even better piece of land. Listen to this. Listen, this is, this is a perfectly fair and straight up request. Give me thy vineyard. But Ahab had not counted on, on Nabob being true to his inheritance and to his God. Ahab forgot that the land was not Nabob's to sell. There was another party. The God who made the heavens and the earth. Throughout Judah and Israel, Jehovah was the real owner of the land. Leviticus 25, 23, Numbers 36 and, and 7 and 8. The land shall not be sold forever, for the land is mine. This is God speaking. For ye are strangers and sojourners with me. So shall not the inheritance of the children of Israel remove from tribe to tribe. For every one of the children of Israel shall keep himself to the inheritance of the tribe of his fathers. But every one of the tribes of the children of Israel shall keep himself to his own inheritance. Nabal, by law, could not sell the land. He could not exchange his land for anything bigger nor better. The Lord forbid it me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. 1 Kings 23, 21, verse 3. How many of us would sell out for a dollar? How many of us would sell just to have a bite to eat? How many of us will reject God during the time of trouble? How many of us will turn our back and not follow the Lord anymore? And then, listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. The king came into his house, and he was displeased. Nabob's request, firm, courageous, final, refused Ahab, and took him for a loop. He messed up his mind. 1 Kings 21, verse 4, And Ahab came into his house heavy, and displeased because of the word from which Nabob the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. And he laid down upon his bed, and he turned away his face, and he would eat no bread. A king acting like a spoiled child. A king, impotent and in, in disappointment. A king, ugly in pity, petty rage. A king, a conqueror, a slave to himself, whining like a sick hound. A king, rejecting all conversation with others. A king, pouting like a child who has been denied one toy. Ahab went into his ivory house while the sun was shining. Ahab went into his house while the matters for the day were not complete. Ahab, the king, went to his bed, turned his face to the wall, his lips trembling, his eyes burning with anger, his heart, his wicked heart, stubborn in perverse rebellion against the commandment of God. Servants brought him his meal, plenteous, prepared on a platter of gold, but he would not eat no bread. 
Maybe musicians came to play skillfully on string instruments, but he drove them away. He turned from his meal as one turns from garbage. Ah, but here comes the wicked queen. She asks, what's wrong? He says, he says, I, I, I spake unto Nabob the Jezreelite and, and said unto him, give me thy vineyard or, or money or, or I will give you, you, you or money or else if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. Jezebel says, are you not the king of this country? Can you not command and have it done? Can you not seize and keep? I thought you told me that you were the king in these parts. And here you are crying like a baby and will not eat because, because you do not have courage to take a bit of land. Now you call yourself the king of Israel. Allow yourself to be dis disobeyed and defiled by a common, a common slave from the country? You are, you are more courteous and considerate of him than you are of your queen. Shame on you. Leave it to me. I'll get the vineyard for you. And all I require is that you ask no questions. Leave it to me, Ahab. So she wrote a letter to the elders of Jezreel. She described a terrible sin that had been committed in the city and that they needed to, to have a prolonged fast in order to advert the wrath of heaven. Worshiper of Baal. Talking about the wrath of heaven. Nabob was going to be accused of blasphemy. And by divine law, the property of the blasphemer and rebel went to the crown, the king. Nabob must be murdered under the order of religion. Can you not see this happening today? In our time, can you not see those who do not believe like some believe, even in the United States, that one day we will be murdered for what we believe? Ah, you can play dumb if you want, but a conflict is coming. The Bible says it's going to be something like we've never seen nor heard of since the beginning of, the, of earth. The devil is silently marching. The devil is silently on the move. The devil is silently taking the control of the mind of men. And what makes it worse is these who call ourselves Christians. People are, are possessed, don't even know it. Revelation 13, 16, and 17, he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Verse 17, that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Verse 18, here is wisdom. Let him that have understanding Count the number of the beasts, for it is the number of a man, and his number six hundred three score 
and 6. Somebody asked, why do we, we repeat the, the fourth commandment? And not the others. You live every day obeying the others. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor. Thou shalt honor the Lord thy God and not put no other gods before him. But for many of us, if we did not repeat the fourth commandment here, our children would never learn it. The Bible says, remember, remember, the fourth commandment is the only commandment that Satan has attacked, and it's still attacking. And, and, there's going to come a time when you and I must make a choice whether we were, what we, whether we will worship and keep God's commandment to worship on Sabbath or Satan's commandment and worship on Sunday. That's when we make that choice that the sweet will be sealed by the power of God. And, man, we as Seventh-day Adventists, we who say that we have the health message. As, as Elder Jarvis was saying, today we need to plant our own gardens, folk. We need to become independent. We need to become self-sufficient. It is sad that first day folk are preaching our message of health. It is sad that as Seventh-day Adventist Christians, we are running from the health message. Because we don't want to give up contaminated meat. Ah, I said it. Everybody, have you, have, you, have, you, have you taken the time, have you taken the time, and, 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 and I've always called him a crazy man, but anyway, I may have to take that back and ask God to forgive me. Have you taken the time to listen to Jim Baker? Have you taken the time to listen to Jim Baker? Get on and listen to Jim Baker and go back, and all they're talking about is health. All they're talking about is becoming able to sustain yourself by eating organic. That's what they're just talking about. Our message. God says we don't do it here. Give it to somebody else. Well, folks, you hear every day there's famine. And we, we, they've already said, they've already said there was 40 million, I believe it was 40 million or something like that, less chickens. They had to euthanize, euthanize, euthanize chickens last year because of them being diseased. There's less cows than there's ever been in the state of Texas, in the history of Texas. A famine is coming to America. You already hear about these children over in Gaza who are starving. And it appears that the Christian world does not care. You hear of children starving in Sudan. The Christian world does not care. Children starving in Africa, they don't care. They keep justifying, and I'm not a politician, they keep justifying the 
the, the, the killings that took place in Israel, that's justifying what they're doing to these innocent folk in Gaza. My folk used to tell me, two wrongs don't make a right. Why should children suffer because of your hate? one for the other. Why should hospitals be bombed because of your hate, one for the other? It's time. It's time for us to wake up. It's time for us to wake up. We're not a denomination like any other denomination. Amen. We are not a denomination like any other denomination. Amen. God set us up. God called us out. Our structure was, was based on the leading and the power of the Holy Ghost. No, everything's not right. But it's time for us to stop coming to church on set, talking about love this and love that. You're seeing your neighbor dying from hunger. I'm not taking the time to call somebody and say hello. That's love. That's love. Looking around and see who's missing and calling them. Said, where are you? Where are you? COVID is gone. <laughs> where are you? And so and so, so she wrote a letter. Listen to it. She wrote a letter in Ahab's name, took it sealed, sealed it. She called a day of fast. She put it on the Jews for them to kill their own, their own family member. She knew, Jezebel knew the Jewish law, a heathen. The world knows Adventism. The world knows. I'm going to just say it. The world knows you ain't supposed to be shopping on the Sabbath. Your neighbor knows that. Your neighbor, your neighbor, your neighbor, your neighbor knows. Your neighbor knows that you don't have no business cursing and acting a fool. Your neighbor knows that you ain't supposed to be eating no pork, drinking no coffee, drinking Coca-Cola, Pepsi. <laughs> they do, they know, folk, they know. They know just as much about us as we know sometimes about ourselves. I went, I went on a trip, on the trip to Africa, and, uh, uh, they said for me, and he gave me a chance to even say yes or no. They say, he don't eat meat. They didn't know me from Adam. They he don't eat meat, he's seven day Adventists. People know. They know. And when they killed that goat, as a friend, as a friend sacrifice, they, they offer a sacrifice as friendship. They took this goat, they kill it in front of you. They skin it, they cook it. When they served it, everybody became Adventists, <laughs> vegetarians. <laughs> everybody was refusing the goat. <laughs> people know, people know. Well, they took, they took, they took Nabob and, and they put him in a place of honor on high. 
I wanted everybody to see. But then, but then she, she knows the word. She, she knew that she had to have two witnesses to accuse him. Deuteronomy 19, 15, one witness shall not raise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin in any sin that he sinneth at the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. They accused him of blasphemy against God and the king. They took him outside the city and they stoned him. Payday, someday. When the king, Ahab, he hears that Nabob is dead, uh, he gets up from his bed, puts on his finest robe, gets his best chariot, and he goes into the field that belong to Nabal. Ah, payday someday. Where's God? Hmm. Where's God? Is he blind that he cannot see? Is he deaf that he cannot hear? Ah, can he not speak? Ah, is he paralyzed that he cannot move? Payday someday. Ah, turn, let's look at verse 17. Verse 17, we got to read it. The Bible says in, in chapter 21, verse 7, And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishabite, saying, Arise, go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, which is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth, whether he has gone down to possess it. And it wasn't his to possess by the law. But he did it anyway. And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus said of the Lord, Has thou killed and also taken possession? And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus said of the Lord, In the place where dogs lick the blood of Nabob, shall dogs lick thy blood even thine. And Ahab said to Elijah, Hast thou found me, O mine enemy? And he answered, I have found thee because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. Behold, I will bring evil upon thee and will take away thy posterity and will cut off from Ahab him that pisses against the wall and him that is shut up and left in Israel. And I will make thine house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nabat, and let and, and, and like the house of all the others. Come on down to 23. And of Jezebel and also spake the Lord, saying, The dogs shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. Him that dieth of Ahab in the city of the dog shall eat, and him that dieth in the field shall the fowls of the air they shall eat. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as a green herb. Pray, payday, someday. I'm trying to tell you today, you need to stop worrying about what's going on. You need to stop worrying about what folk are saying about you. You need to stop worrying about the liars and the haters and the gossipers and all those who are against you because payday is coming someday. Oh, the old song says, I must tell Jesus I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, he kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for his own. We will have trials and tribulations. We will have disappointments, step ups and step backs and step downs. We will have good days and bad days. Days. God never promised that the sun's going to shine in your life every day. God's never promised 
There's not going to be any rain. There's not going to be any storms. There's not going to be any high winds. But remember payday. Someday. Remember he promised never to leave us. Not forsake us. He promised that he will always walk with us. Talk with us. And be there at all times. Remember can't nobody do us like Jesus. Can't nobody do us like the Lord. Payday. Someday. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Hold on. Because one day soon he that will come shall come. And he will not tarry. Hold on, payday, someday, John says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the old things will pass away. Payday, someday, no more liars. Payday, someday, no more backfighters. Payday, someday, no more sickness. Payday. Someday, no more cancer, payday. Someday, weary will cease from trouble. We have payday. Someday. As your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, we all have issues. We all have problems. You, all you have to do is tell Jesus. Oh, tell Jesus. We all suffer. Many of us from different illnesses, different diseases. Oh, there's going to be a payday someday. I'd like for everyone to stand. Do something different on today. While the music is playing, I want you to move around to someone you did not know. And I want you to just start praying for them and they will pray for you. In groups of twos, move quickly or just turn to your neighbor. But just go to someone, whether you know them or not, and pray for them. Don't ask them what they need. Just start praying. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you and pray through you as you pray for them. And I will give you the closing prayer. I must tell Jesus all of my trials. Because he can bear, bear each and every one of them.
our concerns, bring our troubles, we bring our sickness, we bring our depression, our distress, we place it at the foot of the cross. We have nowhere to turn. We've tried this and that and the, and the other things, but Lord, we have nowhere to turn but to you. Only you can handle our issues. Only you can handle our problems. Only you can rightly diagnose our illnesses and the prescriptions that we need. So Father, we give it to you. Lift these burdens that we're carrying. Oh God, the bad memories, erase it from our minds. Those who have hurt us and never have asked for forgiveness, Lord, help us to forgive them and move on. Those, Lord, who are out there, and we, we've been trying to find, Lord, open up a door, make a way out of no way. We'll be able to find our brothers and sisters and entice them to come home and to come back. Lord, we also pray for someone even in our midst right now, here or listening, they do not know you, their personal Savior. Help them to realize they're going to have to answer one day, because payday, someday. So, Father, we, we surrender all to you, all, all that we have, and we give it to you from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet. We give it to you on today. Help us wherever we go, wherever we may be, that we will always be the light shining bright. The light that is a witness for you of your grace and mercy, of your love and of your kindness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank God you may be seated. Give us a few minutes for announcements quickly. Do we have the video up so we can show it? I cherish the blood. Hello everyone. We are the Foster Triplets and it is with great pleasure that we invite you to God of a Second Chance Revival at the Mount Calvary Seventh-day Adventist Church in Tampa, Florida with Evangelist Dr. Moses Brown. This happens, ladies and gentlemen, on the 27th of April, so go ahead and mark that down on your calendar. You can join us starting at 11.30 a.m. for worship and also at 4 o'clock p.m. for our concert. We are looking forward to worshiping with you and praising the Lord together. See you there. Wow, that's why I cherish the blood. Man, that's our crusade that will begin, that will begin on April the 20th through the 27th. Uh, the week will be by Zoom from Sunday to Friday. It will be by Zoom from 7 to 8 p.m. But then each Sabbath we will be here. And the triplets will be with us on the last Sabbath, the 27th. And they will be in concert at 4 p.m. that afternoon. Come and join us on the 27th. Come to stay. We will have lunch prepared for each and every one of us on that particular 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 sabbath uh for those of you who had a birthday this month would you please stand if you had a birthday this month please stand please stand so we can wish you happy birthday let's say amen let's say happy birthday to them now, please everybody happy birthday the best may God bless you and then for those of you who, who had a birthday in the month of March and who are having a birthday in April and May the last Sabbath in May we would like for you to bring a thank offering that is equivalent to how old you have are and have been blessed 
So please, we're asking you to do that. And at board meeting, we're going to announce uh, how much was given for those of us who had a birthday in January and February. If you missed out for those two months, you can still give. And the funds, are, uh, someone said the funds are going to be given to the pastor. No, they are not going to be given to the pastor. The funds are going to be used during the, during the holiday season. We're going to have our children to go shopping and buy gifts for children who are less fortunate than they are. And then we're going to give those gifts out. Can you say amen? Amen, amen, amen. Amen. All right. For those of you who have not signed for our 24-hour prayer uh, service that we are going to be having uh, uh, beginning on uh, the 20th of, 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 of April, we're going to have, we're asking everyone to take a 30-minute time period uh, for you to pray. You can pray with someone, or you can pray by yourself. But we, the, the, uh, I think the, the, uh, the list is out, out front, and you can go there and sign uh, what time you would like to pray. So uh, we want to be sure that we're having someone's name down there, at least one person's name, for every 30 minutes for a 24-hour period for seven, seven days during the week, from the 20th to the 27th, to or the 20, 20. 26. Anyway, we, 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 I need you to go and sign, everyone to go and sign for a 30-minute slot, okay? If you see someone, maybe five or six people who has a time that you would like to have, just pick another time that you see is empty, okay? And, and take that so we don't have everybody bunched up at 7 o'clock, all right? Because while our prayer team will be, will be praying between that regular time between 6.30 and 7.30 every single, every single day. So though, though you can use other slots other than that. And we're also asking for the prayer team uh, members individually to take a time as, as well. Uh, th this afternoon at 1.30, I don't know what time it is, uh, but what time is it? What's that? Okay. At, at, at 1.30, we will be meeting in the choir room. We will begin our study on the book of Revelation. That is at 1.30 in the choir room. Come and join us uh, for that. There will be a town hall meeting with our, with our conference leadership on May, I believe it's the 4th. I don't remember the time, but we will give you the time and we'll give you more information. It's part of the bylaws, and they are uh, keeping with the bylaws that they need to meet with each we're not districts anymore, we're regions now. We meet with each region, and so we are scheduled for May the 4th to meet with our conference officials on that particular day. Our community service is uh, Brother Richardson here. He's not here, so I can take all the credit. Our community service received a $15,000 grant from the North American Division. Let's say amen. Amen, amen, amen. And we will be applying for more funds uh, for our community service so we can advance it as well and it can really take care of our community. We're also planning on putting a garden out over there on the land across the street from the community service uh, building. So uh, when you get the call, please come help us. If we need you to turn over some dirt, if you have a tractor, bring your tractor and all that so we can play like we're real farmers, okay? All right. Um, all right that's Pastor Parham to come and do the next announcement. She can do it better than, than me. Do not forget on, on April the 21st, please place it on your calendar. Come on, Pastor. On April the 21st, uh, we will have a funeral here for Sister uh, Kilburn's, I hope I pronounced that correctly, Kilburn's son, Dwayne. He passed. The funeral will be here at 12 p.m. Um, we were hoping to have it scheduled at 1, but it's going to be scheduled for 12 p.m. So board members, board members, on the 21st, our board will be from 9 to 11. Our board meeting will be from 9 a.m. to 11, verse 10 a.m. To, to, to noon. It will be from 9 to 11. Please come out and support the family. Uh, um, they are still struggling with the death of their son and their and their brother so please come out and let's give them our support uh sister sister carol johnson would like to meet with all the ladies down front immediately at the service uh to uh, my left and your right uh those of you who are interested in the lifestyle education in in light of the cross 
uh, a medical missionary uh, meeting that they're going to have in a, in a place. Anyway, you don't want me to say. But anyway, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, going to the country. And it's, it's, it's for health and, and other things. And she will give you more information on, on that. And it's free. It's free. You just got to get there. Just got to get there and you got to bring a whole lot of stuff, but it's free. Otherwise, uh, you, you, you come and, 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 get, uh, and get some real, real excellent training on being a medical missionary and on your health and things like that. It's free for seven days. It's free. That's, not, that's, that's, that's un, unheard of. So please, if you're interested, meet Sister Jay uh, to my left and your right, right down front, immediately after, after service. Thank you, Pastor. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Just want to remind us that our Hope Nehemiah action takes place this coming Tuesday. Uh, doors open at 6.30 p.m. The meeting starts at 7. It will promptly be done um, at about 8, 8.30. Um, we're going to be at Bible Base uh, Fellowship Church. It's right in Carrollwood. There's two different ones, but we're going to be at the one in Carrollwood. And once again, if you can carpool with someone else, that would be great. We're gonna meet here at the church at 5.30. And if you need to carpool, there'll be others here that you can just uh, hop in with them because Bible Base doesn't have to, enough parking um, for all the congregations that are gonna be involved at that day. And we really need Mount Calvary to show up, right? Mm -hmm. Currently, we only have four individuals who have registered, and I know it's gone out on the flat note, it's gone out on our announcements uh, for you to go ahead and get registered. If you have any questions, call me. Um, you can get registered when you get there, but we really need to be present because we have issues in our community regarding affordable uh, housing. We have a lot of homeless. Um, we also have individuals with mental health and addiction issues uh, that we're fighting for, um, elderly care, and uh, different uh, justice, criminal justice issues, um, even with our youth civil citations. So please, we really need you to be there because this is where our elected officials are gonna be present and let you know what they're doing and what their commitments are to fighting for those issues. So we need um, our members to show up on Tuesday evening, even if you're maybe not a member just yet, whether you're in in-house or you're watching online and you want to be there to see what's going on because we need to be informed, everyone. We have these, these issues are very serious in our community and we need to be present to hear and have commitments being made from our elected officials. Uh, we elected them, you elected them. <laughs> and you need to know what they're doing or what they're not committing to. Amen. So please be present. Amen. Also, on, um, we're trying to get a date for you. The city of Tampa, the city of Tampa has a grant of $100,000 uh, per family, if you qualify, that they will give for you to bring your home, to remodel your home, if you have mold, uh, if you need an air conditioning unit, and it's a list of things. And they're going to come and do a presentation uh, here, but we would like to have a good representation of those of you who live in, in the city of Tampa. They're trying to encourage us not to sell our property to these investors. So the city has set aside millions of dollars now that they will come into our communities, no matter where you live, if you qualify, and they will do some remodeling, whatever you may need done to your home, they will do that so you will stay in your home and not sell it. So please uh, be, look at, be on the lookout for this, and please tell your neighbors, tell your neighbors, tell your friends, tell your children, those who are grown and have home, they live in the city of Tampa, not just in this community, but in the city of Tampa, so we will be giving you more information and a date for that. It will be on, on a Sunday, probably sometime after our board meeting or something like that, okay? So please be on the lookout for that. Let us stand.
Let us pray, loving Father. Thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for extending to us the invitation to come to worship. We give your name praise. We give your name the honor and the glory that is due to you only. Now, Lord, as we leave this place, go with us and go before us. Prepare the way and let us be a witness. Be a witness to someone. Tell them that we serve a risen Savior and he's in the world today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated and follow the direction of the usher. Sabbath family, here are today's announcements and upcoming events. Join us for Mount Calvary Prayer Live, hosted by Dr. Moses Brown on April 17th, 2024, at 7 p.m. with special guest, Dr. Stephen Norman, former Communications Director of the Southern Union of Seventh-day Adventists, with the topic, How God Can Take Your Brokenness and Turn It Into a Blessing. Join us on Facebook or YouTube at Mount Calvary SDA Tampa. You don't want to miss this. 24-7 Prayer. Join us April 20th through the 27th. Everyone who believes in the power of prayer, needs prayer, wants to see loved ones come to Jesus, or wants to experience the baptism of the Holy Spirit, sign up today in the front foyer for one or more 30-minute sessions of prayer. Much prayer, much power. What if I told you the Bible is a fairy tale book and not real? 
How do you really know that the Bible is the Word of God? Why are there so many different versions of the Bible? Find out the answers to all these questions and more. Bring a friend. Hey ladies, it's time for a road trip to Copper Hill, Tennessee, May 26th through June 2nd. It's a free seven day stay. However, there are only 17 spots available. Register today. See Dominique Ben or Sister Carol Johnson to register. Community service hours. Are you in need of community service hours? If so, Meet Ms. Sandra Hall in the Fellowship Hall following Divine Service today. Hurry, there's a limited number of volunteers needed. Don't miss out. Do you have the desire to see justice prevail? Then join the upcoming Hope Nehemiah Action this Tuesday, April 16th from 6 to 8 p.m. live and in person. Everyone is welcome at Bible Based Fellowship 4811 Ehrlich Road, Tampa. Come hear about issues surrounding mental health, affordable housing, and other issues. A block note message will be sent out as a reminder. Remember to save the date for the upcoming Nehemiah Action. On this Tuesday, we're looking for help with carpooling. Call Pastor Parham if available at 954 701 7659. April is here and I hope you are moving more. I certainly am. If you haven't planted anything, it's probably too late. I hope you weren't like me. I quickly realized that too much fertilizer is not a good thing. On April 14, get ready for a field trip. We will visit the home of Mr. Edson Jarvis to see his garden. This event starts at 11 a.m., so see the church bulletin for Mr. Jarvis's address. A flock note will be sent with the address and time before the event. By the 15th of the month, please send a picture of you moving more or of you gardening or both. We will have a wonderful display of our first harvest on April 27th in the lobby. I can't wait to see what you have grown. We will end the month with another opportunity for you to move more and to fellowship. Get ready for instructor-led chair exercises, horseshoes, volleyball, a boxing station, and shot glass smoothies. After or before you work out, enjoy a therapeutic chair massage from Michelle Clendenin. Michelle is a licensed massage therapist dedicated to holistic health and wellness since 2010. She has a background in massage therapy from the Florida College of Natural Health. She expanded her expertise with a bachelor in sports and exercise science from the University of Central Florida and has a master's in clinical nutrition from Sonorian University of Health Sciences. For just a dollar a minute, you can get a massage that will help you feel refreshed and support a minority-owned business. If you are interested in a massage on April 28th, sign up in the lobby to secure a spot. In April... Let's get into nature. If you are graduating or have a graduate this year, Mount Calvary SDA Church would love to celebrate with you. This year, Graduation Sabbath will be taking place on May 25th. We would love to recognize your academic achievements, all graduates pre-K and higher. Please RSVP by May 10th with your information to communications at mountcalvarysdatampa.org. Information should include the graduate's name, the school, a picture of the graduate, and future plans. Please refer to the Flock Note Bulletin for all announcements, links, and times. If you'd like to connect with us, please contact us at www. Dot mountcalvarysda.org or visit us on Facebook and continue to watch us on YouTube at Mount Calvary SDA Tampa and be sure to subscribe to our page. Have a happy Sabbath.
We are the Foster Triplets and it is with great pleasure that we invite you to God of a Second Chance Revival at the Mount Calvary Seventh-day Adventist Church in Tampa, Florida with Evangelist Dr. Moses Brown. This happens, ladies and gentlemen, on the 27th of April, so go ahead and mark that down on your calendar. You can join us starting at 11.30 a.m. for worship and also at 4 o'clock p.m. for our concert. We are looking forward to worshiping with you and praising the Lord together. See you there. Bow. That's why I cherish the 